Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and cover how to make a Minecraft server in 1.17.1 using the Java download, Spigot, or Paper. So we're gonna go through three different options while downloading your Minecraft file. Now in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and go step by step where to go to download, how to download it, install it, run it, in order to get your Minecraft world set up for hosting it from your computer where others will be able to connect. We're not gonna go over port forwarding in this video. This will be just a closed intra network. And then in an upcoming video, we can go ahead and cover how to port forward in order to have your friends, you know, your good friends, connect to your local computer. So with that said, if you are brand new to the channel, have not yet subscribed, go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it gray, hit the bell to be notified every time I release a brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue, and let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, if you guys haven't checked out my channel in the past, we have recently came out with a couple new free Minecraft hosts. One is called Skynode, the other was called Felix Node. We also released a video going over three cracked Minecraft server hosts that are completely free. So if you guys haven't checked those videos out, definitely go, go and check them out. Now, starting with our downloads. Now, if you want the normal vanilla, no add-ons, no plugins, no mods, then head over to minecraft.net and look for that server download. You're gonna be downloading the normal 1.17.1. Now, if you're looking to download some plugins, such as the Essentials X, World Guard, uh, you know, some there's a bunch of other ones out there. We'll go ahead and cover a lot of plugins in the future, but we're gonna go ahead and go over these three main ones. We have the vanilla one, which is just plain Minecraft, nothing special. Then you have your spigot and your paper. In our example, we loaded paper. We believe that it runs a little bit faster, has a little bit better protection. So we went ahead and went with paper in this example, but you can go ahead and head to any of these uh, there will be links down in the description to each of one of these sites for the 1.17.1 download. Once you have it downloaded, here's an example of the typical vanilla Minecraft one. It has the download link right here. It also gives you a little snippet that you can enter for a command that we'll need in the future if you have any issues. I'll go ahead and show you why you may want to use this little command that they provide you here. Now, if you're gonna be downloading Spigot here, you would head over to this website. This is how it would look. You would go ahead and click on the Spigot 1.17.1.jar. And if you're downloading paper, you would head over to the Paper MC website. The latest version that we got was number 165. So we went ahead and clicked on the build and downloaded it to our computer. I created a folder within my software folder where I keep all my software at. I just named it Minecraft Server 1.17.1. It was a blank slate. Now I'm downloading my file as server.jar. This is important that you kind of keep track of what you're downloading your file as. Uh, because spigot may download as spigot 1.17.1.jar so just keeping that as an example we're going to need that here in just a second so again i downloaded mine as server.jar now if you run into this issue such as we were you know we're going through it as a regular user trying to install a minecraft server 1.17.1 by running this Typically it would launch the launcher, you get the EULA in another file there, but in this case we're having some sort of an installation error. So in order to find out what error you were having, this is where we would need to go over to right click, head over to new, and create a new text document. Within this text document, this is that little snippet that was on the Minecraft website. They use 1024 here for this number here and this number here. That provides your Minecraft server with one gig. If you want two gigs, three gigs, or four gigs, typically it depends on what your computer can handle. So if you're running 16 gigs on your computer and you typically take up 12 gigs to the normal, you know, normal stuff on your computer you may not want to load it with four you may want to load it like with two or one but my computer here has 32 gigs of ram so i typically load four gigs just to have a nice smooth experience so make sure you have what your computer can handle here allocated and here this other file right here this is that file name that we were talking about that server.jar 
This is what our file was downloaded as server.jar. If it was spigot, you want to rename this file to match your installation or your jar file. So if it was at 17-1.17.1, you would wanna put that in there as one. So again, make sure that this matches your server file. And then when you save it, save it as start server.bat. The dot .bat is the most important thing because that's gonna create a batch file. And then go ahead and click on save. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and run your batch file that you created. It's gonna go ahead and punch that command out to that specific jar file. And it's gonna give you the error, you know, why you're receiving the error. So in this case, this Minecraft 1.17 server requires Java 16 or above to run. So it kind of gives you a website here of where to go to download that new Java. So I went ahead and headed over to that website. This is the website here that appeared. I went ahead and selected that open JDK 16 made sure that was selected and downloaded the latest release. I went ahead and just downloaded it into my Minecraft server. You can download it into your downloads, your desktop, just anywhere you can find it and select save. Once you've done that, go ahead and run it as an admin or you know general user, then go ahead and go through the prompts. Next, make sure that you associate here. It should by default associate this Java file to associate with all .jar files. If these aren't selected, make sure that they're selected correctly, but by default, it should automatically do all this for you. Then hit next, install. If you're not running your typical computer as an admin, I never run any of my general work as an admin. I always have a general user and then I always have an elevated. So I always have to manually punch in a password there. So install and then finish. Once you've done this, now the, the next time that you run your server uh, start file, it's gonna go ahead and go through this whole little option here where it's gonna have you go into the EULA. So it's gonna fail the initial time. You can see that it did create some files this time. We got one step further than last time. Last time we didn't even know what error it was. Then we created the file. We found out what our error was. We downloaded the Java file. Now, as we're down and running this once again, now we need to accept the EULA. So go into your EULA. You can see that on. Uh, the file here we click on eola on the right hand side without it being edited the eola by default will be false you want to go ahead and open that up set it to capital true t-r-u-e and head over to save save that file out and then you can go ahead and close it once you've done that you have two options here now that we've corrected our issue with our Java, we can either load it via the start server batch file that we created. It'll just kind of run that server jar file in a command prompt, or we can run the server.jar file itself. Either way would work here. We went ahead and started it with the start.server batch file that we created. We went ahead and just selected private and public, but you definitely want to select the private network. Otherwise your friends and other individuals will not be able to connect to your uh, Minecraft server, it'll kind of block it off inside of the firewall. So go ahead and allow that access. Now the other option as we kind of talked about would be that server.jar file. If you ran the server.jar versus the batch file, this is what would pop up. It would just kind of pop up within its own Java window as the Minecraft server, kind of run the same way. You would still get the same prompt here. Make sure that you select at least the private network, you know, for sure you don't typically want to have you know give people access on private or public networks uh, once you've selected that go ahead and allow access go through the prompts now you are officially done as far as locally setting up your minecraft server you can see here that as it goes down towards the bottom you should see that the timing reset complete that means that your world has been fully built so that is it, that is done. Now you can log into your server two ways. If you're hosting it yourself on your own computer, you can go ahead and punch in zero. You can type in local host. And because it's you that's connecting, you'll be able to connect to your own Minecraft server just by looping back into the, the loopback address there, the zero. Uh, but if you are a friend, someone there that's trying to connect to your Minecraft server, you'll want to go get your computer's IP address. This can be done by clicking start, the command key on the MacBooks, go into either command prompt or terminals, and do an IP config. Forgot what the command is on Mac, but you want to get your IP address. Here, I, I 
here. Our IPv4 address is the 192.168.1.2. You want to go ahead and let the others that are trying to connect to your Minecraft server use that IP address. Again, we're not doing any sort of port forwarding. Otherwise, you would be connecting to a public IP. We can go ahead and cover that in an upcoming video. But I wanted to go ahead and get the basic creating a Minecraft server here in 1.17.1. Once you have the IP address, you can connect to that one through your multiplayer server address. And we'll go ahead and log into the Minecraft world here. We can see that our world was built. There's our last command there of timing reset. We went ahead and punched in the IP address and Unchallenged has joined the game. And there we are, Unchallenged had joined the game and it kind of showcases within our console where exactly we loaded into the world on our own hosted Minecraft server. Now this is locally hosted. The difference between starting up your own single player mode and selecting a LAN open mode is that by doing it this way, this server can kind of run indefinitely of whether you have Minecraft up or not. So this is a server world where you can come and go from it, your friends can come and go from it at any time, and it'll just be up so long as the command prompt or that Java prompt is up and running. In the solo player, as we kind of made a video in the past, if anybody, if the main player that has the open LAN connection disconnects or closes their game, everyone drops out. No one can connect back into the world. So this one's just an, a little higher elevated state that doesn't have you always punch it in the IP address, a new port every single time you're wanting to kind of play together. Plus by loading paper or spigot, you have the plugins folder here on the left hand side so we can begin to load some of our favorite plugins. So if you like running with Essentials X, which gives you the ability to have home, to have back commands, you have, we also have the claiming plugin that allows you to claim your home. Uh, we have a couple other plugins that give dungeons, you know, you can install dungeons in your Minecraft world. So there's a ton of different plugins that are available out there. So we'll, we'll go through a few different plugins. If you guys have suggestions for plugins as well, let me know down in the comment section below and we can definitely cover them in the future. But that is it as far as starting your very own Minecraft server in 1.17.1. Otherwise, that is going to be it for this video. Everyone, thanks again for tuning in. If you guys are brand new here to the channel, definitely go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it gray, hit the bell to be notified every time I release a brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue. And again, check out the videos here that we have on our main page, going over starting up your free Minecraft server over at Felix Node. Check out Sky Node. Check out, we have another video going over other seven hosts as well. Plus we have the free cracked Minecraft server host that we've recently checked out. So if you guys have cracked clients, those ones also work for you guys as well. So that is it for this video. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.